The Dope Sheet is one of the most powerful animation tools in Blender. But what is the Dope Sheet? Well, the Dope Sheet is a keyframe manipulation tool, just like the graph editor and timeline, which you can use to drag keyframes, scale them, retime them, delete them, etc. So let's see how to use the Dope Sheet. To access the Dope Sheet, you can create a new panel in your current workspace by right clicking, selecting Split Area, and left clicking to confirm. You can then select the Dope Sheet Editor from the Editor drop down menu. Alternatively, however, you can simply go to the Animation Workspace, and the Dope Sheet will be provided for you at the bottom instead of the timeline. Now, if you haven't seen the timeline video, I highly recommend going to watch that for a basic understanding of how animation and keyframe manipulation works. Both the timeline and the Dope Sheet can do basic keyframe manipulation, but the Dope Sheet has a few extra features. If you've seen the timeline video, you'll know that you can select and transform keyframes in various ways. These basic methods of keyframe manipulation all work in the Dope Sheet as well. Additional keyframe selection options also exist under the Select menu. Let's go ahead and make some keyframes for our object so we can see what this looks like. Just like our timeline video, let's once again animate a simple bouncing ball. To do this, simply subdivide your default cube by holding Ctrl and pressing 2 on the number row. Then turn on Auto Keyframe. We'll set a keyframe for a high pose on the first frame. Go to frame 10 and set a low pose where it's touching the grid. We can then set a much lower high pose on frame 15 and duplicate frame 10 to frame 20 for our final low pose. Excellent! Now we can go ahead and change our handle type for our extreme low poses on frame 10 and 20. This will once again give us that bouncing ball look. We can also bring our end frame back to 40 for a shorter playback loop time. However, let's pay attention to our keyframes here. Unlike the timeline, our dope sheet provides a little bit more visual information about our keyframes. For example, each of these keyframes is a different shape based on the handle type. By default, in fact, our keyframes are no longer diamond, but rather round circles. Circle shows that the handle type is auto-clamped, while square means vector. Feel free to test what shapes the other handles are. Additionally, you can also change the interpolation mode of your keyframes by pressing T or selecting one under the right-click context menu. When would you want to do this? Well, one of the most common interpolation modes, besides the default Bezier mode, is the constant interpolation mode. This is used most often for blocking an animation, turning off interpolation so you can focus on your keyframes. Let's go ahead and select all of our keyframes by pressing A, then press T to change our interpolation mode to constant. As you can see, our ball now snaps directly to each keyframe without interpolating motion in between. However, you'll also notice that our keyframes have an added visual indicator of the keyframes interpolation mode being different, specifically this green horizontal line between keyframes. Not only does this tell you that the interpolation mode has been edited, but it also informs you where the interpolation mode is affecting the animation at a glance. This can be very helpful when interpolation mode is only affecting certain keyframes and not others. For example, if we select our first frame and change that back to Bezier, you'll notice that the constant interpolation mode doesn't begin until after the second keyframe. But one thing you may have noticed is that we have far more keyframes here vertically than we did for the timeline. This is because the Dope Sheet expands channel groups, which shows us individual channels with keyframes that belong to each one. This gives us access to individual channels such as X location or Z rotation. Keep in mind that above every column of keyframes, there is a parent keyframe that manipulates all keyframes below it. To select all keyframes in a single column very quickly, however, you can simply hold Alt and left click. This is similar to how you can select edge loops in mesh edit mode. Speaking of groups, you can actually create your own group of channels with its own parent keyframe by selecting the channels on the left and going to the channel menu. From there, simply select group channels. Hotkey users can press Ctrl G. This will create a new group that you can expand or collapse with whatever channels you like, assuming they belong to the same object. To remove a channel from an existing group, Simply select it and go to the same channels menu and select Ungroup Channels. Hotkey users can press Ctrl-Alt-G. For additional channel-specific settings, 
feel free to experiment with the other functions in the channel menu. Now, the channels we see here are determined by what object we have selected. But what if we wanted to see every keyframe in our scene from every object? To do that, we can simply change the settings here, which determines what keyframes to display. By default, this arrow cursor icon is enabled, meaning that the dope sheet will only display keyframes of the objects you have selected. However, we can also toggle this off, allowing the dope sheet to display all keyframes of all currently visible objects. To also include hidden objects, simply toggle on the middle button with the dotted line cube icon. This will include any objects that are not visible. However, it does not include objects that are in collections that have been unchecked. In case you ever get lost in the sea of keyframes or really need to zoom out quickly to see all of your keyframes, simply hover over the dope sheet and press Home. You can also go to View, View All. Now let's talk about a few more advanced dope sheet features that will be able to help us in our animation workflow. For starters, the View menu will give us several different functions and tools already. Over here we have our Preview Range tools. Remember the stopwatch icon on the timeline? This is for setting that same preview range that the stopwatch icon toggles on and off. Simply select Set Preview Range and you'll be able to click and drag an area to set the beginning and end frames of the preview range. The Show Sliders option displays the values of each keyframe as a slider that you can adjust and animate very easily all in one place. Without this option, you would need to go to wherever each channel's value is displayed separately on the UI to change its value directly. Also, this removes the need to go into the graph editor for very small adjustments, but we'll talk about the graph editor in another video. The Show Curve Extremes option allows you to see the peaks and troughs of your object's motion for that particular channel. This will make more sense if you see it in the graph editor, but for now, let's take a look at our Z location channel. As you can see, based on these new keyframe shapes, you can see that our curve is bending downwards for these frames and bending back upwards for these frames, which lines up with what our object is doing. But you might be wondering, what is a curve, and why do we keep talking about it when we're only looking at dots and straight lines here? That's a great question. The curves we're referring to are the interpolation curves that can be seen and edited directly in the graph editor. You can actually very easily enter the graph editor from the dope sheet by going to View, Toggle Graph Editor. Hotkey users can press Control Tab while hovering over the dope sheet to toggle between the graph editor and the dope sheet. In the graph editor, you'll be able to see the curves clearly, showing exactly how the interpolation modes look and what curve extremes look like. In some software, the graph editor takes dominance as the keyframe manipulator, even basic keyframe manipulation, due to the absence of a powerful dope sheet. However, in Blender, with the dope sheet that it has, much of the basic keyframe manipulation can be done very easily without sifting through complex curves but the graph editor can still be very helpful for advanced tweaking and visualization. We'll talk more about the graph editor in the next video. I hope this video has shown you how powerful the dope sheet is for animation in Blender.